Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 255 of Screw the Commute podcast. This is part of Humble Alpha Week, and we've got the the ramrod of Humble Alpha here today, uh, Stephen Kuhn. And I'll bring him on in a minute, but I just love this guy. We really hit it off, and uh, and I'm really excited about this project that he's got and going to tell you about. But, you know, last episode, you talked to his partner in crime, Lane Ballone. He's the Green Beret Special Forces guy that uh, was part of Help Humble Alpha Week, and he gave you kind of a primer on what the book is about and what the movement is about. But uh, Stephen's going to go a little deeper here. So I hope you didn't miss that episode 254. And the one before that was me talking about personality power and tied it in to the humble alpha and how it can really do good for you and the people around you. All right, grab a copy of our free automation book at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. Screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And all the stuff we talk about will, of course, be in the show notes. This is episode 255. So you go to screwthecommute.com slash 255. And uh, grab a copy of that book. It has meant enormous things to me over many years on speed of taking care of customers, a lot more money because of that, saved me millions and millions of keystrokes. So uh, check it out at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And then um, while you're at it, grab a copy of our podcast app. It's screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P. What you can do there. Uh, you know, a lot of people give you an app and then you're trying to figure the darn thing out. Well, no, we don't roll that way. You have complete screen captures and a video to show you how to use all the fancy functions so you can take us with you on the road. That's screwthecommute.com slash app. Now, our sponsor is the Internet Marketing Training Center of Virginia. It's a distance learning school, but this summer we're opening up for in-house classes because we are trying to get approved by the, uh, not the Department of Defense, to, to take the GI Bill. We're already approved by the DOD to take for military spouse scholarships, but we're trying to take the GI Bill to, to help more veterans. So I do have a plea for everyone. If you know a, uh, an actual accountant that's certified to do audits and that's veteran friendly, uh, I'd like to talk to them. I'm trying to get somebody to either donate an audit or do it at a big reduced fee because I'm just trying to help veterans by doing this, and uh, and I'm uh, really looking for that, and it's an absolute mandatory that I have this done before I can even apply, and there's hundreds and hundreds of pages of documentation to apply, but I need this audit, and I can't do it myself. So if you know anybody, please let me know. All right, but anyway, we're talking about the school, imtcva.org. And it's helped a lot of people. A little later, I'll tell you about the quiz that I want you to take that has something to do with ripoffs in the collegiate market. So uh, we'll get to that a little later. All right, let's get to the main event. Stephen Kuhn is a decorated U.S. military combat veteran who has been handpicked to consult with some of the most influential people in the world. We're talking rock stars, singers, actors, business leaders, and politicians, and I mean, we thank him so much for slumming it to come on this show today. So, <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, he's teaching them how to expand their brand and build value and loyalty and develop strategies for increasing uh, beneficial relationships and achieving the true. And you got to say this a certain way: quality of life. <laughs> you got to say it with a certain inflection. That's his catchphrase. So Stephen's a best-selling author, and he has a new book coming out, which is part of Humble Alpha Week here, um, with, with his partner and co-author Lane Ballone, the Special Forces Green Beret veteran I was telling you about. The name of the book is Unleash Your Humble Alpha, Own Your Own Presence in Life, and Become the Epic Leader You Are Meant to Be. Stephen, are you ready to screw the commute? Both. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, you got a beautiful wife over there too, and two, two beautiful kids. So you've been partaking, I think. So, <laughs> so uh, how you been, man? It's been a little while since the uh, military influencers conference. I think since I uh, uh, yeah. saw you. And how yeah, you been? It's been a while. 
<laughs> Tell them where doing all right. You know, busy honkering down, getting this book done. You know, digging deep. Uh, you know, the, when when you write a book and then you pass over it again, you realize, oh man, we missed half the book. And then you write it again. <laughs> And then you pass through that, oh, we forgot this, because mm -hmm. it's like peeling an onion back. It just keeps going on and on and on. So we had to stop, actually, and then edit what we have, and we'll just bring in another Yeah, have a later part for... two later, yeah. So yeah. Tell, tell them where you're talking to me from today. Um, I'm talking to you right now from a little little village outside of Budapest, Hungary. We have about 2,000 people that live here. It's an old German village, so I get to practice my German skills. Um, and, but, you know, the main language is Hungarian, of course. I live here, live here with my wife and my two young children, four and five, Max and Chenga. Max and Changa. Well, uh, so uh, before we got on here, you said, well, I had a little daddy-daughter uh, experience here this morning. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do with a, a, a daughter. I, you know, the, the problem with having a beautiful daughter is, well, a problem with having a daughter, from my opinion, as not being a parent, is, okay, if they're really ugly, then you gotta <laughs> you got to fight over them, <laughs> you know, because people are teasing them. If they're really gorgeous, you still have to fight over them because the guys are chasing around. You can't win at this. Forget oh, it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to win. It's hard to win. It's hard to win. So, Regardless. So anyway, you uh, you uh, tell us about this uh, book and this movement that's going on and the charitable connections you have with it and all that. Sure. Well, you know, the book. Um, it, it's literally, and you know, I've written a book before, or two books before. The one book uh, only came out in German. It was so bad. <laughs> oh, <it> was, uh, <laughs> I read that. Yeah, I read that. Oh, one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was a. It was called, uh, if I translate it, "Served in the Gulf from Soldier to Cynic," and it was about a, a guy, me, who um, you know thought he was this gung ho superhero and went to war and found out that he wasn't. And what the war then did to me, how, to, how it made me reflect upon myself and how I then lived my life afterwards, according to this, I mean, uh, after the things that happened to me over there or happened around me. And so that came out the day the war started in 2003. You see, I was in the first Gulf War, Desert Storm. So when it came out, all publishers in America, you know, grabbed it. And then they read the manuscript. They're like, well, we're not printing this. <laughs> because, <you know? laughs> because it was, it was all positive back then. Remember, uh -huh. I was living in Germany at the time, which was one of the axis of evil countries that George Bush labeled. So I had no chance. So, um, so this book here takes some of those stories and the impact that war and brotherhood of, of, uh, of the military and my afterlife there dealing with PTSD, dealing with um, a depression, suicide attempts and things like that, and how I came out of that. You disappeared right? off the face of the earth for a while, didn't you? I did. I went to a, a, an Austrian monastery. Didn't tell anybody. Now. <laughs> didn't tell anybody. Didn't tell a soul. I'm going to do that thing. if I ever run my credit cards up really high. I'm going to just disappear. I did that. I ran my credit cards up. I, mean, I, <laughs> I, I couldn't pay my rent, credit cards, phone bills, nothing. But I, I didn't even take my laptop or cell phone with me, so I didn't care. And you know, you know what the funny thing is? That we were so attached to our lives and everything's so important. I went away for that by, about eight months. And I came back and every, everyone was okay with it. It was like, um, you haven't paid your you know, you bill for eight months. I'm like, okay, I'll pay you 10, 10 bucks a month. I don't have any money. I'm homeless. And they're like, okay. You know, it was like, it was, yeah, it was exactly right, I, right. I guess it has to do with the energy uh, that you omit or that you're, you're, you're giving out when you, when you're in a place of um, computer, 100% pure certainty. And that's where I was. And it faded after that because you get back into life and things like that. And I said, you know, there's a way to grab that certainty in life without having to disappear from the face of the earth. And that's what Lane and I have been working on the last year and a half and what I've been working on the last, you know, since that, since 2008. And I believe I can say with, with um, hundred percent certainty that we nailed it in this book, how you can go from being a position or a title at work and a uh, less than happy father at home, maybe because you're so focused on work to becoming that balanced person all the way around and dominate in every arena of life. Um, and you know, that doesn't only have to do with you, obviously, because, one of our um, focuses is rewriting societal expectations of men to prove there is a greater man in every man. Uh, and that might sound to some women or whoever, they might be like, well, why only men? Well, because Lane and I are funny enough. Men. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why we're writing about men. Mm -hmm. We could have written about horses, but we're, you know, we're not horses. So, well, I mean, so, I could have written about it. Some people call me a horses, you know, behind. <laughs> you know, I could have written, dude, I'll handle that book for you. True. I could do the donkey if you yeah. want. 
So that's where it comes from. And what, what the outcome will be is when the humble alpha movement succeeds, hundreds of thousands of men will refuse to accept society's rules as they were written. And that's part of the movement that we've already mm-hmm. created. And, and I, I got to say this, though. To this point in the pre-launch of the book, um, we've had more women show massive interest. Not only do they say they want to read the book, but they want their men to read the book. Mm-hmm. They want their sons to read the book. Um, fathers are saying this is like the stuff that's made for teaching children. And we had did not have that in mind when we did this, but it's so amazing to hear everyone read the excerpt and go, my God, this is groundbreaking. And the reason it's groundbreaking is because everything in there comes from our life for real. Lane's life, my life, our struggles, our, our champions, everything that we've done. We kept looking at like what things repeated themselves. And how do we stop it? Because, you know, people get into that rut, right? So they fail, they fail, they fail, mm-hmm. or they win, they win, they win. And we, we wanted to look at what caused that fail, what caused that win. And we came up with five proprietary models that we use. Um, Lane talked about um, some of them already. Um, and I'm going to talk about some more today. He, you know, he looked at, he talked about quality of life, um, of course. And um, I think he talked about life enterprise as well. So that's two of the models that we came up with. So everything in this book is actually what we lived. It's not theory. It's not, hey, feel good, bull, bull at BS. You know, it's not, it's none of that like sort of, oh, let's just write some cool stuff here. This is our life opened up, souls wide open. Stories are told. And from those stories that we tell, we teach the lesson we learned and how to implement in your life. And every chapter has an action, a, a, an action page. So this is what you do now. Before you go to the next chapter, do this. Bam, 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 bam. I was talking to an author um, um, a couple of weeks ago, a very, very well-known author, and he said, it's always missing in books. As you're reading the book, and it's like, well, where do I get started? Mm-hmm. What do I do? Where are the action steps? And that just gave me the point uh, that Lane and I, we said, well, we got to put action steps in there. So it's well, I just want to know long. if this is going to hold up under pressure. Like, like the first day some kid shows up at the door to date your daughter, <laughs> you open it up and you smash him in the face with the humble alpha book read this do a book report and maybe i'll let you in next time <laughs> good idea i'll stack at the door yeah man. right <laughs> mm. yeah good point um so you know, the, the thing about the book is that we're not saying we're perfect we're not saying we have all the answers what we're saying is both of us lane and i live the lives we want to live 100 percent. i mean there's nothing we do that we don't want to do and there's everything we have is what, what we want to have. So that in itself is a quality of life that, you know, I like to say seldom a person can achieve. I, I think you've achieved it as well. You do what you do when you do, how you do with who you want to do it, where you want to do it, right? That's a quality of life. But there's other pieces in there too, relationships, your mind, you know, your body, all these things, they all tie together. So you're staying in shape, you're eating well. Um, you're, you're exercising your mind, growing your mind, learning, teaching as well. You learn even more when you teach, which you probably mm-hmm. know better than anyone. Um, so these are all parts of the book, and it, and it leads you down a path of finding that epic quality of life. But it's all based on one thing, and that's, of course, HIT, mm-hmm. which we talked about in our last um, podcast we did. And as you know, some people online call me the HIT man, mm-hmm. and my mm-hmm. podcast is called The HIT Show. Right. And it stands for honesty, integrity, and transparency. <clears throat> honesty with yourself while you do what you do. Transparency is how you take that honesty into the world right? Transparency wise. And of course, integrity is the byproduct. And that's the basis of everything that we do. And the coolest thing about it is that when you operate from a moral basis of hit, nothing, no one can have anything on you because you're transparent and honest about everything you do. And I mean, like really honest. And you're you're not going to go out there and tell your your competitor, you're almost broke and you can't beat them. (laughs) You're 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 going to be, we we always say you're honest and transparent to the point that both parties have a win-win. Like your right, aunt, so your aunt the, Bessie's hat looks beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if she exactly. asks you, right? <laughs> so, so this is this is more than a book, though, isn't it? The, you're you're feeling like this is a movement, and it's already started before the book is out. Yeah, it, it has, and men are jumping on board. It, uh, you know, it's 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 a little overwhelming sometimes. The messages we get from guys that are like, you know. I've always felt like there's something missing or I really was searching for something where I could, you know, dig my teeth into to, to, because I feel like I can't go out in public. I can't say what I want to say. Sometimes I can't even dress like I want to dress. You know, a lot of men are going down that, 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 that path of, of what they call um, group individualism. So, you know, the, the, the groomed beard and the hard part in the hair and the plaid shirt and, you know, that tattoo mm-hmm. sleeves on the arms and stuff. 
which makes them feel like, okay, we have an identity now. We're a group of men who have an identity, a group identity. But, um, and that's not, unfortunately, who they really are. That's what they're doing to look like they want to feel like. Right? Yeah, and then men so, are under attack I was in the U.S. with this toxic max masculinity stuff. Man, yeah, I can even completely. say it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, dare, dare yeah. I say it? But, yeah. You know, and, and and this is this book is as much for women as it is for men because we want the women to see that you know we're we're hurting as much as 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 anybody else out there. I can't say because I'm not a woman how much they hurt, but we're hurting too, right? And it's not a sympathy call at all. We, we want to grab, dig deep in the core of our souls and bring out the true power of our identity and define our purpose and create certainty. Now, the identity part is the most important because when you're yourself, you can walk into any room up to any person. You can go to a bar and, and tell a woman your hair is beautiful and she won't even look at you twice as, as if you're trying to pick her up because your energy is from a place of, look, I know who I am. I don't need anything from you. You know, it isn't like you're trying to pick them up. Same thing goes when I when I walk up to a celebrity or like Bill Clinton or whoever. I, I hey, William Jefferson Clinton, how you doing? These things that I say because I'm comfortable with who I am. I, their reaction, their expectations, and here it is: the expectations of society on men don't matter. Then, when you're operating from a core principle of hit, when you know who you are, when you, who your what your identity is. Now, let's face it: a lot of people say, "Do you know who I am? I'm the CEO, <laughs> or I'm, right?" Well, unfortunately, that's not who they are. That's what they are. And they forgot they about the humble part right there right, somehow. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, they, they missed, missed that. that part. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've heard it before, right? You know, mm -hmm. people, you know who I am. Yeah. People dropping names and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And and that and that's because they've taken on their position or their title as an identity because that gives them a, a something to sort of hide behind or retreat behind or take solace in. But then when they go home, right? Men, in this case, when they go home, they sort of feel like maybe not the same kind of person. Mm. And there's a litmus test that we use for that. We say, okay, if your wife was at your work on a fly on the wall, would she recognize you? Number one. Number two, if an employee was a fly on the wall in your living room, would you be embarrassed? You know, so are you the leader at home as you are at work? Not saying you have to be, but are you the same person? You can take the love you have at home and bring it to work and take the leadership you have at work and bring it home. And most men don't do that. Well, the and thing I is, I, I would be embarrassed because uh, I wouldn't have any pants on, probably. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably Thank not God a good sign. I know. Wow, yeah. Thank God we're not recording video right, right. now, right? <laughs> so, so now there's a there's a charitable aspect to this, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. We, okay, so the charitable aspect is really interesting. You know, Lane and I, we we both come from humble beginnings. Um, Lane had food and even a car given to his family to help them get along. He told me some stories where I'll, I'll let him tell them, but they lived in a tent for a while. They were homeless and, it, you know, pretty heavy stuff. Uh, mine wasn't that heavy, but, you know, we moved around quite often due to different reasons uh, that I won't go into. And I remember uh, dinner time was always the same thing. It was either can canned corned beef hash or liver. And we always had a big bottle of ketchup to put on both because mm -hmm. I just couldn't stand the taste. And so we, we, we come from that place and we said, well, what can we do to show that a humble alpha isn't only about themselves, it's about generosity, it's about spreading the love, about investing in others, investing in relational capital, that kind of stuff. So we chose a, a um, nonprofit called generosityfeeds.org who feeds children in America. And so far they've made like, I don't know, like 30 million meals or 3,500,000 meals so far for children in America. And the guy who runs it is called, who founded it and runs it is called Ron Klabunda. You should have him on the show, by the way. Uh, fantastic guy, humble alpha himself, actually. Uh, and uh, we just hit it off and we said, we want to help you guys. So 100% of the net proceeds of all the book sales go to Generosity Feeds. Um, and it's funny because we broke it down. A book between, between if you buy a, um, a paperback book, that'll feed three kids. Can you imagine? Mm. Yeah, feed three amazing. kids just by buying one book. Right. So if you buy the like, there's a VIP package where we actually come to your office, Elaine and I, and we work with you for a whole day. That'll feed like you know ten thousand kids, and mm -hmm. it's 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 amazing that we can actually you know sort of measure how many kids we're right, feeding right. book by book by book, and that's that's something we're quite excited about as well. Um, you know, Ron's really into this heavy as well. Ron and I hit it off. We met met in person in Croatia at a retreat. Um, and we just hit it off and then, uh, Lane and him hit it off and it's, it's like a marriage made in heaven. All right. But, uh, you have a, uh, an Indiegogo thing set up for this. Yes, we do. We have an Indiegogo set up. Um, 
it's not set up yet, but it'll be set up on the 9th of March. I don't, I'm not sure when this podcast is released, but on the 9th of March. It'll oh, be I released. thought uh, I thought Lane said it was going to be the second of March. Is it, it was, is it when delayed? Lane was on your podcast. It was it uh, was on the second, and we changed it to the 9th yesterday. Okay, all right. Uh, because um, because uh, we wanted to make sure the back end was right. You know how the IT right, system sure, going. yeah. There's nothing wrong, nothing worse than getting something. You know, purchasing something or putting your name in something and not getting something. Right, and that was right. happening. When we run the test so we want to make sure we get that right and um so on the 9th it'll 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 be released but we had a few of the perks are you know a, a paperback a paperback with a signature in it um then we have a paperback with a signature the audiobook and the ebook and you know all these different packages and then it goes up even higher like i said we come to your office or you have a call with us we have um dave rabin from apollo neuro it's a wearable device that changes your mood by I mean, a, t a touch of a button with a, um, electronic um, impulses, not like zapping. I was going to say, I can yeah. think of no, some, no. some. Like a dog collar. Yeah, you put a dog right. Collar. <laughs> or, or a stun actually, gun. <laughs> right. So he's, he's an amazing guy. Uh, he's been working for over 10 years specifically on the mind, the, you know, on the mind and how it reacts to um, ultra waves, ultrasounds, all that kind of stuff. So he, he's, he's one of the pack. He, you can, you can join one of the packages, purchase one of the packages to join him on a call with us. Um, you know, there's some really, really exciting packages out there, even a special edition hard, hardback as a hard cover. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. hard cover. I was speaking German earlier. So uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> getting back to the English again. Right. Um, so the special edition hard, hard back, hard cover will be probably like a hundred, only a hundred of them. They'll be serial numbered, signed and, and by person in the whole works. So, and what we're trying to do is raise as much money as possible for generosity feeds. Now, all of this does one thing. It gets our book out there, of course, right? We're not making any money from it. The, the rest of the go covers costs and ads and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff and Indiegogo and all that kind of stuff. And the rest goes to generosity feeds. But what we, what we do is we have a program called the humble alpha leader program. And this is what <clears throat> our mission actually is, not just to write a book and to inspire millions of men mm -hmm. and women, but to actually get those men into a program to actually do the work and make the change and start spreading the humble alpha message through person to person throughout the world. So that's our actual mission. It's not just to sell the book. The book is almost like a tool to feed kids, to show that we can actually, um, as humble men, be generous in our life in a big, big, big way, and then get the men to say, yeah, I want to do that too. So they join us on the Humble Alpha Leader Program. All right, so we'll have the links to that Indiegogo uh, in the show notes, folks, and it'll be going live on the 9th now. So uh, whatever right. I said on the uh, Lane's thing is not correct anymore. But uh, hey, what's, uh, what's really great is worth waiting for, huh? So uh, we got to take a brief sponsor break. When we come back, we're going to uh, uh, tap... Uh, Stephen, to give us uh, one big lesson from the book that we can uh, we can go away with. So, so uh, folks, I was telling you about a quiz earlier with uh, my school, and it's seven uh, ways that major colleges and universities are ripping off students and families. <clears throat> and uh, and you know, I have this show in Hollywood in development called Scam Brigade, so I'm very highly in tune with things that are fraudulent, and. I swear, if these colleges hadn't been brainwashing you for 100 years telling you how great they are, that they'd be in jail because these things are just bad. So it'd only take you two minutes to take the quiz. It's at imtcva.org forward slash quiz. imtcva.org forward slash quiz. And that'll be in the show notes. And, uh, and even if it doesn't apply to you, I'm sure you know a, a family that's or nephews and nieces or grandchildren that are thinking about college. And, and I got to tell you, Google, IBM, uh, Apple, uh, Bank of America, and tons of other places are not requiring college degrees anymore. Uh, they don't want people that know how to protest. They don't want people that, that are, uh, uh, you know, got an A in art history, which is nothing wrong with history or art. But the thing is, is they want people that can do stuff. And so, um, they got rid of the uh, college degree requirements. So with our school, you can be making money in less than six months. And we have uh, examples of that of people that are doing it. So, so check out that quiz at imtcva.org and forward slash quiz. And then if we can help you in our school, I'd be glad to talk to anybody about uh, their future or their children's future with a highly in-demand skill on the internet, which I have been living. This is not a book report. I've been living this since 1994 when the commercial internet started. So, so there we go. 
All right, let's get back to the main event. Stephen Kuhn, a Bronze Star recipient, is here with us talking about the Humble Alpha Movement. I'll say it's more than a, a book. It's a, it's a movement, and that's not anything you got to take x lax for. You just you gotta, you gotta, you know, you read the book, and then you jump on the, the damn bandwagon because and these guys – Yeah, these guys are Fiber. doing – Fiber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so Stephen, uh, give us a big lesson that we can take home out of this uh, out of this book. Well, you know, one of the most powerful um, um, models that Lane and I use every single day, multiple times, uh, is called creating space. And creating space is, in a in a nutshell, a way to get what you want while everybody else gets what they want. Okay. So, creating space is real simple. When you go. Well, first of all, we, I, I mentioned before, we live from hit. Honesty and take mm -hmm. transparency. And that means because you're coming from a place of, of, of hit, you have no expectations of other people. You either have an expectation and you verbalize it, or you don't have an expectation. That way you'll never be disappointed. And a third of your day suddenly disappears because a third of your day, on average, people worry about what other people are thinking, what mom's doing, why the kids said that, why are they looking at me like that? What is the boss saying? Oh my God, the boss called me into the office. What mm -hmm. am I going to do? Is he going to fire me? You don't worry about any of that stuff anymore because you know where you're coming from. You know your identity. So creating spaces, when you get called into the, to the office, you walk in, right before you walk in, you clear your mind of every expectation. You have no cookie cutter solutions, no preconceived answers that you're going to say as soon as they're done talking. Same thing goes for networking. Shut up. You know, quit talking and trying to put your elevator pitch in someone's ear. Um, and you show up with one intention only. And that, only, that one intention is to create value for the other person. And what that does is it relieves any tensions in the room creates a space around everyone there where then everyone sort of steps in automatically because it's like a vacuum into their own greatness. And that's when you come up with ideas and solutions that you alone never would come up with. They call it the mastermind, right? Mm -hmm. So when two people come together, it's like when two tenors sing one octave apart, it creates a third, you know, <coughs> right. a third octave. Mm -hmm. um, so two people sing, it sounds like three. Uh, it's the same thing with creating space. And you can use this with your children. You can use it with your wife or your husband. You can use it at work, on stage, on a podcast, being interviewed like I am right now. Like, I didn't study anything before I came on here. I know that what I'm going to say is going to come from a place of integrity. So I'm not going to try to preconceive my answers to you because they have to fit perfectly to this conversation. Otherwise, it's not a conversation. It's just question and answer. And so that's, that's an example. And, of course, you go that far where people say, you know, I just maybe this deal isn't right, but I want to work with you. I've had mm -hmm. that happen so many times that a better deal, a better situation, met some amazing people, came out of just creating space. I might not have got to deal, but I don't worry about it. Like I said, when I go in there, because if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I cannot worry about the things that I can control. We control one thing, and that's the intention. We can't control the outcome or the expectation. All right, so you're saying that guy standing outside his boss's office shouldn't call his landlord and say the rent's going to be late. <laughs> Definitely no. not. Definitely okay. not. Never preconceive, preconceive what's happening, what's going to happen, the outcome. Never preconceive. Yeah, he might be in there to give him a raise. You never know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, look, it's just exactly, and this is the deal too. Like, even if, even when, and this sounds a little cheesy, but it really works. When I go to the check-in at uh, at the airports, and, I, and I, if I'm not flying business class, um, which which only sounds arrogant because. Uh, you don't know that I'm six foot four and 250 pounds. Mm. So I try to fly business as much as possible. <laughs> um, but if I don't have business, I will create space as I'm walking to the counter and just, you know, just create that, that, that neutrality where they just get sucked. And I say, Hey, what kind of upgrades you got today? Mm. And, and that, and that way they'll be like, Oh, let me check. And they don't even think about it. Like, Oh, let me check. Oh, we got an upgrade for you right there. You know? I'm like, okay, great. Thank you. She's like, well, you got to pay. I'm like, I got to pay for an upgrade. Really? Yeah, you should pay. Well, let me check. And then boom, get up. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. that simple. Because I don't worry about if I get like, oh, I want that upgrade. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I get it. Right? I care that I'm adding value to this person, make her feel good, you know, or him. You know, I actually did that with my wife one time while we were at the airport. That's I, how you I got your this. two kids. I did it I did it with my wife one time at the airport. Um, and, uh, the guy at the counter was so, you know, blown away and loved us so much because of the value we created for him as just making him feel good emotions, investing racial capital, uh, elevating him that he ended up coming to our wedding. And the guy's <laughs> like one of my best friends. Yeah. He's one of my best friends. Wow. Now. Wow. Yeah. He was, he was in Newark, New Jersey at the check-in counter. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. It works. It works. It works. So, um, yeah. so, uh, where do they go for the Indiegogo thing now? 
What? We're not there yet? Everything oh, is going to go oh, through so the Humble Alpha, the humblealphabook.com. I can get an there. excerpt there now, right? Yeah, I can get an excerpt there right now. Humble and Alpha. Later, it'll be this what is humble it? Alpha, humblealphabook.com. Is it the Humble Alpha or Humble no. Alpha Book? Humble Alpha Book. Okay, and we'll have that in the show notes. So you can get okay. an excerpt right now, even though the Indiegogo right. thing isn't ready till uh, a couple of days right. later. And there's three ways you can take you can take part. You can be, you know, a supporter where you can purchase a book or a package or something. You can be a, um, a supporter with your mailing list. For instance, um, Tom, you have a big yep. mailing yep. list. Yeah, sure. I want to sign up to help. And what you do is you you you'll sign up, and then we have a competition uh, or a contest. I guess you could call it. Really not a competition. Whoever signs up the most people who buy the most books, they win prizes. So, for instance, if you win first place, you get to go with us to Hawaii to our Humble Alpha retreat. Um, in no, see, I didn't know that. I heard you said I got a trip to Hawaii, but I didn't know I had to go with you. <laughs> <laughs> we can fly on different places. I don't want you there when I'm taking my hula lesson at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> I can teach you. I already know how. No, <laughs> All right, so it's the humble it's humblealphabook.com and that'll be where the the link to the Indiegogo thing will be also when it's live, right? Right, exactly. All right. So, uh Steven, so great to catch up with you, man, and uh this is a great movement. Uh, it's going to help a lot of people out and going to give a lot more men so all these women that are complaining there's no good guys around now, they got they'll have too many of them. They'll have their pick. That's uh, that. That's one of the outcomes. Indeed, it is. Yes. There we yes, go. Thanks so much for having me. All Tom. right. I appreciate it. Yep. Always a always a pleasure and always a great laugh. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun, fun, fun. All right. <laughs> so, folks, uh, we'll check out humblealphabook.com, and we will. Uh, and then we'll keep your eye open for that Indiegogo uh, promo that's going to happen, and get, jump in on the uh, the thing to sell some books for them. And you're going to feed a lot of kids. You're going to do a lot of good. Uh, there's no downside to this. That's the way uh, Stephen rolls. That's why I like him so much. And uh, Lane, you had you talked, uh, you heard Wednesday, and these uh, these guys are the best of the best. And not only that, they kept us safe from uh, you know their their veteran service. So appreciate that very much. Thank you so much, Tom. Really, right. really do. All right, man. Go back to uh, taking care of your little girl problem. <laughs> all right. Thanks, brother. All right. Catch y'all in the next episode. See you later.